Okay, hello again to everyone who's in attendance. Uh, I just want to say welcome to the users of bplans.com, LivePlan, and biz to credit uh, LivePlan and biz to credit teams are very happy to partner uh, together here, and we wanted to address some of the most common questions that we hear from our audiences uh, about your needs surrounding small business lending. Our focus today is five things you should do with a business loan, which is obviously a key question for any small business. Or if you've already gotten that loan and you need to plan for what those next steps are. Obviously, biz to credit is the expert in matching you up with that perfect lender, and LifePlan is here to help you forecast what you'll do with that money after you get it and where you're going to take your business for uh, growth into the future. I want to remind everyone that today's webinar will be available after the broadcast on bplans.com. The URL will be at articles.bplans.com where we'll post a transcript. Uh, also, we'll answer questions that maybe didn't get addressed during today's live webinar. So do feel free to answer, uh, ask any questions over on the right-hand panel, uh, over in the questions bar. And today, uh, I have the pleasure of introducing Rohit Arora. Rohit is the CEO and co-founder of Vista Credit, uh, and that's one of he's one of the country's leading experts in small business finance. Uh, Rohit has extensive expertise in financial services and the issues facing startups and growing small businesses across the globe. Uh, in 2011, in fact, he was named New York City's top entrepreneur by Crane's New York Business. Uh, he meets regularly with top execs from Federal Reserve, Treasury Department, White House, all on topics related to small business finance. You may have read something by him uh, on the internet or in publications. So uh, definitely an expert and also, of course, uh, the CEO and founder of biz to credit So that is one of the uh, primary partners that B plans and live plan are currently using for our uh, lending needs. So again, please uh, welcome Rohit, and uh, we look forward to a great presentation today. Thanks. Peter, thanks for the eloquent uh, introduction, and I welcome everybody uh, who's a participant in the webinar. Uh, we started with a small pool of five questions, and we will give one minute for every question. This also helps us to guide the discussion better, and the flow is that uh, we will start with a presentation on uh, what you should do once you get the business loan, so the top five steps. Uh, that will take around half an hour, and then we will o open it up for Q&A. The folks can tweet uh, their questions also at uh, hashtag biz to credit or they can put it in their panel for the webinar and we can answer it. And the another housekeeping announcement is that uh, if you tweet about this webinar during or after the webinar at hashtag biz loans, you will be eligible for a $15, $15 of a gift card. Uh, and as part of the webinar, you know, uh, Palo Alto will be sending out the uh, recording link to everyone, and we will also be sending out the presentation. And if you have any questions, even after the webinar, you can uh, reach us at info at biz2credit.com. And as a preferred partner's uh, customer, we will try to help you even more, including setting up a free loan consultation through our credit partners for you guys. So. So that's what we really wanted to, uh, you know, go over. And now we are on uh, on a second question, and the question is all about, you know, that what is the the top thing that you're looking out when you, when you are searching for a loan? Uh, what what do you have in your mind? You know, whether it's uh, any issues with your credit being low or being a startup, because we get a lot of startups and getting access to credit for startups is actually harder than getting access to credit for more well-established businesses. We totally realize that issue in the marketplace, and we are trying to solve that issue every single day. Uh, or, or a question of high rates, because unfortunately what has happened is that in the country is that after the Great Recession, while the interest rates have gone down, uh, the uh, the access to credit for small businesses has never been tighter and that reflects in higher interest rates. So that clearly means that as a business owner or a prospective business owner, you need to 
uh, be more well prepared when you are going uh, uh, to getting access to credit. It's not as easy as uh, just walking into a branch, a bank branch next door and uh, hoping that you will get the credit. So I think that's something very important. And this question number three is extremely important because one good thing which has come out of the recession is that uh, uh, the advent of online lending uh, that is clearly changing the marketplace that's putting a lot of pressure on banks and we would love to get your feedback on what you feel is a reasonable response time uh, because this helps us to go back to the banks and other lending partners and tell them that you know what the business owners are really looking for and what their expectations are and then what they can uh, expect from uh, the lending institution. So the more feedback you give us, the more we can use it to go and educate our lending partners, uh, which include banks, non-banks, as well as policy makers, and that's always helpful. Uh, we'll just go uh, to our question number four. And uh, and this is very important because, as I was saying, uh, alternative lending has really boomed uh, in the country over the last uh, three to four years. And that, so the good news with that is that you, you can get your money pretty quickly. Uh, but the bad news there is most of the time is that the interest rate is pretty high compared to a bank. So this again is a very important question. This gives us an idea of what you're looking for. Uh, and this also gives you an idea that when you should really start looking for access to credit. So the sooner you start, the earlier you start, the better for you because it obviously takes much longer time to get more reasonably cost money and you need to be more well prepared. And that something is very important uh, uh, to really understand and figure out and plan. Uh, and that should be part of your business plan also, including your financial projections and your cash flow projections also. That's how you go from that. And and this is going to be our final question before we start the actual webinar. And uh, so, uh, and this is extremely important because uh, getting money is only first step towards uh, getting started. This is not the end. This is just a start. So this is extremely important that you know how you get uh, once you have the money in hand, how you use it. Because the best way to use that money is to show to the lender or prospective lenders and the credit bureaus that you are a smart business person and you can use this money to either start a business, grow a business or repay expensive debt that you might have taken, uh, run a payroll on time, pay your bills on time uh, because we will talk about the importance of business credit uh, down the line during this webinar. So all these things actually will impact uh, the success and growth of your small business uh, because getting the first round of debt financing is a big milestone for any small business and that should actually help them to prepare uh, them to keep growing their business and keep getting more money at a lower cost than what they got in the first time. So I think those, so these are very important questions and we love your feedback and we would love to, you know, uh, share the poll results also as, as part of the presentation. So that will give you an idea of what other people are thinking and what their expectations are. Uh, so now we are past the pool uh, stuff uh, and getting into more interesting stuff of, uh, you know, how do you, uh, uh, or what are the things that you should be doing once you get business loan. Uh, just to give you a brief background, uh, and uh, we are pulling up the screen, uh, you know, where uh, uh, it will start the slideshow. And, uh, and yeah, so 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 the key thing here is that you know, uh, as you can see, you know we have been partnering with Palo Alto for more than a year, and as I said, you know if you tweet on hashtag business loans, uh, you will be eligible for a dollar fifteen gift card. Uh, you can tweet any questions on uh, hash to credit, or send us a question at info at best to credit dot com, or just put it on the dashboard. So I will just, you know, start uh, with uh, one question that a lot of people ask me and have been asking me over the last few years is, what is best to credit? Uh, best to credit, and to just give you a personal introduction, I am the co-founder and CEO of best to credit uh, We started, me and my brother actually started this company six years back. 
uh, being a first generation American immigrant, uh, uh, you know, we always thought, uh, both of us coming from India, was that, you know, we will start a business in U.S. And we thought uh, about starting few kind of businesses, and we stumbled upon this idea where we said that while, while starting or running our own small business, we should be able to help other small businesses. And this actually started uh, in late 2007, early 2008. And we started it offline. We started building an online marketplace where our vision was to help small business owners who don't have an in-house CFO get access to credit in a very secured environment without having to go from place to place. And they should have all the different tools in hand, uh, whether uh, an ability to use the online tools or ability to pull all the third-party data. And over the last six years, in spite of all the market challenges and problems, we have facilitated lending of over a billion dollars. Uh, we hit that milestone sometime last year. You know, we have been, uh, we have more than 1,200 lenders on our platform, including 50 plus micro lenders. And micro lenders are playing a key role because they are one of the best sources of funding for startups in the country. Uh, and uh, micro lenders have really grown over the last three, four years after the recession. Uh, became acute and they are getting a lot of help and support both from the federal government as well as from the state government so so keep that in mind because I know a lot of our audience to today are either startups or are very young businesses so we have a whole gamut of micro lenders on our platform who can help you uh, uh, through one single application and through our loan consultant so so feel uh, uh, free to you know try our platform because it's free for you guys so we don't charge you any money uh, and uh, and it's pretty seamless and you know there's a fundamental problem out there in the marketplace today this problem has got even more acute uh, when the recession started uh, somewhere in 2008 2009 and the problem even earlier was that you know small business lending overall unlike consumer lending is very paper intensive, it's very fragmented, and going from institution to institution takes a lot of time. There is no transparency, nobody really knows whether you will get the money or not. And uh, it creates all kind of issues, and as a small business owner, especially if you're a startup or, or a very young business, you're so busy in trying to run your business on a day-to-day -day basis that you have no time in the world to even think about going to different lending institutions. And that's where biz to credit comes into picture. So what we do at biz to credit is that we said that, okay, you know, how can we make the lives of small business owners simpler and, and easier? And uh, we found out that a lot of small business owners, when they're applying for loans, they don't know what's the best loan product for them. What they really know is that how much money they need, what is the use of the money, and they have some idea about, you know, how they will repay that back. So we said, Okay, if you know, if you guys know that, then rest is bills to credit's responsibility. That what are the best products? How to go about doing it? And one thing I would like to stress here is that for startups or for very young businesses, having a business plan is important. And I'm not saying that because we work with B plans. I'm saying that because of the fact that without having a good business plan and starting a loan application, uh, just shows a business owner in a poor light to a lender. That clearly shows that a business owner is not well prepared to articulate what the business they are in, what they can do with that. And the key thing any lender wants to see is that once you get the money, how you will use the, uh, the funds. What are the use of the funds? That's extremely important and that's something that you know businesses need to be clear about. So, so having that in uh, mind is important. We totally understand that best to credit that small business lending landscape is complicated. It's 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 really an understatement even when I say the word complicated because you have so many different kind of products. You can get a working capital, you can get a term loan. Uh, a lot of people ask us question whether I should get equipment financing or equipment leasing. Now there's a peer to peer uh, lending which has started. There is a big alternative lending in the country. Uh, you can get money against your credit card receivables, you can get money against your bank deposit receivables, and it's a, it's an alphabetic soup out there. Uh, and we at Vistokrit totally understand that, you know, even people who are financially extremely savvy are having a hard time even to understand it. 
and when a, a person is running a small business and is so focused on what they do, it becomes extremely difficult for them to understand. And that's where we are not expecting you to know the products, while what we are saying is that we will actually walk you through the whole process so that you know what, what are your best products. And just to reiterate here is that we at biz to credit don't make any money selling leads. We don't sell leads, period, over. So if you put your information on our platform, we are not trying to sell that information to any lender. While what we have done is that we actually have got the underwriting criteria of all the lenders on our platform. We know exactly which lender needs what. It, do they need a business plan? What kind of a business plan? What kind of documentation? What kind of financials? And we have a large number of loan specialists who will help you with that on an ongoing basis. And the way we make our money is by getting a cut in the transaction fee from the lenders. So it's fully transparent that we don't make any money till you guys get money in hand. So that I think is extremely important to know and understand. And we are trying to help you uh, with all the different products out there. And I think uh, what we have come at to Credit is something, you know, smart goals. So what are your goals? Because as I said earlier, any lender that you go to, they really want to know what your goals are, what your aim is, how will you use the money, how, how you'll pay it back. And that's where the business plan becomes important. But what should be there in a business plan? And that's something important. You know, as, as you can see on this slide, you have to be very precise. I'm not going to repeat all what is written on this slide, but you have to be precise. You have to make it extremely actionable. You have to be realistic. Uh, you know, Excel sheets are a great tool, but they're also very, very dangerous because you can just keep multiplying things and things can look so big. And Based on our experience, we have seen that whatever revenue that you are projecting, let's say you are starting a business, and whatever revenue you are projecting over next year or two years, and whatever expenses that you have, you should haircut or reduce your revenue by at least 50% and increase your expenses by at least 50% and then see whether you will still be in business or not. So that's one thing. The second thing that you need to see is that, you know, the first year is, is something that you can get through in a business. Uh, you're passionate about it, you put all your energy, you are poured everything. Second year is when your idea needs to be validated and needs to start, you know, standing on its own feet. And third year is the most critical. So we have seen that businesses which survive the first thousand days actually start doing well, while the businesses which uh, actually have the big highest failure rate happen some, somewhere in the second to third year. And you will be amazed at one thing, and Bill Gates also famously said that, that entrepreneurs under overestimate what they can do in first two to three years and underestimate what they can do in next five to seven years. So we have seen this, we have seen this from our own experience when we started the company. We got into the worst recession in the last 60, 70 years. Uh, we were very close at best credit to getting shut down, but we persisted. Uh, we were very uh, cognizant about our cash flow, uh, we were very cognizant about our cost and everything, and we survived. And then, you know, after a year, two year time, you know, we just started growing. You know, we got so many more customers, we got so many more lenders, and everybody started using our platform. So that's where you have to be. You have to be realistic. You have to stick around. You have to be uh, time bound, and you need to measure everything. Because if you don't measure things, you will never fix it. So that's something is key that you have to you know go about doing it and i think getting a business plan in place helps you uh, two or three ways the first way is that when you start a business and you make a business plan and then you can go back after a, a year or a six months and can do a reality check you can say that okay what assumptions i made because every business plan is built on certain assumptions uh, whether i was able to grow the business the way I wanted to grow, whether the margins in the industry that I, I'm in are realistic uh, compared to what I put in the business plan. And the business plan also helps you to figure out whether you should even take debt or not, because if you take debt which you're not able to service, uh, you know, that is uh, going to create more problems for you. Because in small business lending, almost a large, very large portion of loans are linked to your personal guarantee. And once you have a personal guarantee, that means that you are on hook personally to pay that money back if your business fails. So you have to be very clear about it, that when you borrow money, you have to borrow it in a conservative fashion. You have to use every 
single dollar out there to keep growing your business build a track record because once you have a track record getting money becomes very easy so i think that's the mm, key thing and that's why having specific objectives for yourself as well as for your managers uh, having a financial forecast and benchmarking yourself against those financial forecasts is extremely important there is a famous saying that cash flow is the bloodline of your business you could be an extremely profitable business on paper and can still go under if you don't collect your money on time and if your cash flow becomes extremely weak so keep that in mind while you have that and this is very important because uh, you know you should not borrow money till the time you know how to repay it back so 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 at the time expects you to articulate extremely clearly what are the use of the funds at the same point of time in our experience a lot of business owners while they know the use of the funds they don't have a backup plan on how to repay the money so an example is that if you have to repay the, um, uh, a certain amount of money on a monthly basis or on a daily or a weekly basis you should have certain cash reserves in your accounts so without having cash reserves in your account you won't be able to buffer any kind of unforeseen stuff that might happen to your business prime example is earlier this year we witnessed one of the harshest winters ever in 29 states in the country and we saw from very close quarters that businesses which had no backup plan which which never thought that they will get shut down due to bad weather and had high cost loans had a lot of trouble in servicing those loans and that's what you don't want to do because you want to have a repayment plan and you want to figure out that if god forbid your business slows down or it shuts down for a certain period of time you still have the ability to keep making the payments or the minimum payments or you have another plan out there which can help you to uh, mitigate that risk so i think that's something very important uh, the second thing is you know you have to work out the frequency so some businesses can pay back daily well because let's say you are a retail business it's easy for you to uh, pay it back on a daily basis because you pay a very small amount and you get money every day you pay out every day it keeps your liabilities in control for certain other businesses which have uh, bigger account receivables and they don't get their money back on daily basis uh, really figuring out whether you can pay it weekly uh, fortnightly or monthly is extremely important because these payment options should really decide that which loan product you should really apply and get uh, unfortunately a lot of small businesses when they are looking to borrow money don't think like that and then later down the line they have these repayment issues because this is going to help uh, you to build your business credit or if you get into trouble in repaying this is going to also destroy your or damage your business credit so so business credit is just like personal credit you have to maintain it you have to be careful you have to plan everything and then the other piece of advice is that work only with those platforms right now there's a lot of online platforms there's a lot of business brokers or financial brokers who might be calling you uh, work only with those platforms that you can trust where you can check the customer experiences of the other customers where you can see the name of reputed lenders associated with them because that's also important because sometimes what happens is that you go to someone they will offer you money and then they will start pressurizing you and chasing you for that and then you take money under pressure without realizing the the challenges and the issues with that and that can also you know damage your business down the line uh, the third aspect is the timeline you know uh, again when I started the webinar I said when you borrow the money for the first time or the second time that's not the end of the process that's just the start of the process so when you borrow the money so the first time or the second time you really need to figure out use of funds how last how long it will last if you're using it for working capital and when you will need more money again the role of a business plan is very important because uh, again a business plan is not just written one time it should be updated every six months every year big companies may have yearly budgets they have yearly forecasting tools that's what a small business should be doing or a startup and this will help you to figure out when you need more money because if you are desperate if you're trying to get money at the last minute 
it's always going to be more expensive it's always going to be on at the terms that you don't like or you cannot afford or you will be paying a lot of money to an intermediary to get that kind of money because you are in a rush you don't have a lot of time and you haven't really planned for it so so this is extremely important the timeline because we have seen small business owners get so busy in in just running day to day business that they don't have any time to plan for this uh building business credit is something that not many small business owners know while almost everybody in us now has a pretty decent idea about their personal credit their personal credit scores if we go and ask small business owners what is a business credit what is a business credit score they have no idea so your business credit is as important as your personal credit because the way if you borrow money on credit cards if you have phone lines if you have utility bills on your personal credit and you keep making money on time or you keep uh, repaying on time your personal credit score goes up so personal credit scores are uh, scores which are given out by fico and are administered by three credit bureaus in the trans union expedient and equifax and they range between 350 to 850 unfortunately there is no single agency which does business credit dun and brad street is the major leading agency which has a business credit files and business credit score cards uh experian does that equifax does that so unfortunately unlike personal credit there's no single place where you can go and pull your business credit reports and get and can get all kind of scores but that doesn't mean that you cannot maintain or build your business credit it's it's as similar as maintaining your personal credit that means paying your bills on time first of all if you are getting any utility for your office including your electricity your phones take it on on the name of the business start paying your bills on time that helps you to build a track record of your business that helps you to get accredited with bureaus like like dnb and experian and do not make late payments because if you start making habitual late payments it will actually reflect on your business credit report and lenders will become very nervous because their nervousness is that if you're not able to make payments on time for even small utility bills or small um, bills on other uh, services then how will you be able to repay them a loan on time the other thing is work out clear terms with your vendors and if you're getting late on paying your vendors talk to them unfortunately in the us the vendors can report you back to these credit bureaus and it can start reflecting on your business credit that will clearly mean that uh, the lenders will not be very comfortable lending you money at the right cost the question uh, is not getting money the question is getting money at the right terms the right price and that's where you need to maintain a stellar track record on your business credit reports or business credit and even if you have to spend some money in trying to get those business credit reports do that what we do at best to credit is that for all our subscribers and our subscribers are our free users they can pull their business credit reports uh, on our platform through dnb and other bureaus and we give them a 50% discount than what they will get on their own on their own if they go directly to these bureaus so you can come in you can do that you can actually check your credit worthiness because that's going to help you the other thing is and i think this is one of the most most important thing be responsible we saw this uh, in businesses prior to the recession when money was easy a lot of business owners borrowed money and they started buying real estate they started investing money in their other personal assets they started using the money to just support and fund their lifestyles don't do that because that's going to hurt you that's going to hurt not only you on the personal level that's also going to hurt you on the business side of the of the equation so if you are borrowing money on business settle only those personal debts that you took for business because that shows two things that's going to improve your personal cash flow and that also shows you to a lender that you are a responsible borrower and you totally understand that when you borrow money what is the use of the proceeds and whatever use of proceeds that you you actually tell the lender that you are going to do follow that because that also shows your character that shows that you have clarity as well as the character to follow things that you state because that's very important a big part of small business lending is on your character it's not just on your cash flow and and as i said you know don't buy personal real estate because a lot of businesses 
uh, business owners have made that mistake. They have uh, in the past, you know, just took money out from the business and, you know, starting buying personal assets, which reflects very badly on both the business as well as the business owner. And the other thing is, you know, use the loan proceeds only to grow or your business because that's something very very helpful when you go back to a lender and show them that you invested money what you borrowed from them to grow your business and how that has grown the business it gives them that confidence that yes this is a responsible borrower this is a financially savvy borrower and they know how to uh, spend money or invest money to keep growing their business because growing business you clearly means that lenders get more confident in your ability to borrow more money and repay more money that also helps you to actually get money at a lower cost which I think is something very important what we do at best to credit is that we actually give you a free financial checkup tool known as biz analyzer this is on our home page this is on your dashboard as soon as you log in and what this does is that as soon as you uh, apply for a business loan or you can get a free financial checkup even otherwise this will track your uh, your creditworthiness. This will help you to benchmark your business with other businesses in your industry, in your geography, in your uh, uh, life cycle of the business, whether you're a startup or a well-established business. It sends you alerts. It will monitor your cash flow. It will monitor your personal credit. It will help you to do things that uh, uh, your CFO or your CPA should be doing, but they don't have time and you don't have time and it is accessible through your mobile also so you can get all your updates we also provide you with a free document management system known as doc vault which is up to 10 GB and what that does is that you can store all your documents you can uh, pull all your tax returns from IRS directly there you can sync your bank accounts and the reason we do that is that we we have seen from experience that uh, small business owners are again very busy people they don't have time and the documents are lying all over the place and when it comes to borrow money from banks uh, or renew their uh, loans or lines of credit they are just all over the place and that doesn't help you because even if you got the loan for the first time you need to keep sending documents over to your lender on a yearly basis on how your business is doing and by having everything in one place which is accessible through your mobile it's easy we have a knowledge center so we bring out a lot of ebooks uh, the next ebook we are bringing out is on how to manage your credit. Uh, we just brought out an ebook on how to apply for an SBA loan. So you can go there, you can download those free of cost. This is all for you. These are all the resources that we have put in place uh, in partnership with uh, experts like Palo Alto and other companies who are in this business of helping small businesses. We also bring out a small business lending index, which helps you. Again, you can get all the information on our website and this index helps you to figure out who is lending money and and who is not lending money at what rates they are lending money and and what is your chances of getting an approval from a bank or a non-bank if you are planning to apply for a loan so even if you don't want to apply for a loan through our platform this all this piece of information is there for you this is extremely helpful this is extremely uh, I would say something that you should use because you, you know it will help you to be more well prepared uh, because there's a famous saying out there that more you sweat in peace the less you bleed in war so this is like when you start a business or when you go are going out to raise money for your business it's like going into a war these days so so you would be better prepared uh, about you know doing things that uh, that you're expected to do you know so obviously the summary is very simple you know have your smart goals and smart what we just defined you know make it actionable make it reasonable you know make it timeline driven so those are very important things have a business plan in place uh, yeah, that's extremely important you know put to, or together a repayment plan you should know exactly how much money you have to repay every day every week every month and how you will do it uh, uh, create and follow a timeline you know this is very very important timeline not just to borrow money but how you're gonna track your business performance how you're gonna grow your business what are the things that you're gonna do uh, keep building your business credit that's very important the day you start a company the day you incorporate your company that's the day when your business credit should start coming in 
so I think that's important. Be responsible. You have to be responsible because it's your business. It's your personal uh, assets which are online. Uh, you are an entrepreneur. You are a small business owner. You are your own boss. So you have to be responsible. You're not just responsible for yourself, but you're also responsible for your employees, for your customers, for your products, for your services, for your reputation. So this is a big responsibility when you start or grow your business. So you have to be very, very careful about it. You know. So I think that's what we have to uh, keep in mind. And uh, uh, we would like to open up uh, the forum for any questions that you might have. As I said, you can tweet us at uh, at Best Credit or uh, send us an email or just you know put it on the dashboard. Peter, you're there. Hi, sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, so there are a few questions, uh, you know. Yes, hi. Uh, so we've got one question here from the B plan side of things. It looks like somebody is wondering a little bit about what, what kinds of loans there are, what kind of uh, funding they can expect, and, and how a small business can really tell the difference between all the different types of lenders that you mentioned earlier, you know, and how they can figure out what's right for them. It's kind of a vague question, but maybe there's a an overview you could give on that. Yeah, so I think that's a very good question. So if you go on our website uh, and you click on business loans uh, on the top, you business loans which are available for a small business owner. And as I said earlier, we at Best Credit are not expecting you to really know what's the best loan for you. That's what our algorithms and our loan specialists can help you with that. But you can still go on bestcredit.com, click on business loans, and you can see every single kind of loan which is available for business owners with all the write-up and the description about those loan products and the features. And uh, the other thing is that you can set up a free loan consultation with our loan specialist and they can walk you through the process also, you know, actually. And as regards the kind of lenders, so we have lenders who are banks, who are non-banks, who are micro lenders. And again, their, you know, Biz to Credit will help you uh, through the whole process so you don't have to worry about who is the best fit for you because we will give you the top five options in every category and you can see and compare them with their with their interest rates with their uh, uh, or what kind of loan products they have or what other customers have experienced with them and then you can decide you can set up again a free loan consultation and our loan specialist will help you with that also but but everything will be available to you on your dashboards you, you can see every single lender that is matched to your products you can see what they offer how they offer and what they have done in past with other business owners great uh, one more question for you here the uh, this is about paying back a loan and so if uh, if a business has the cash flow to, to pay back faster um, or pay back, you know, on time or, you know, in advance. Uh, what is, do you have any sort of general advice as to, uh, you know, uh, whether the, the speed of paying back the loan is very important, whether they should try and pay it back as fast as possible or just stick to the regular payments? What, um, is there any sort of general advice or is that kind of a loan-to-loan, -loan, uh, you know, sort of a dependent kind of question? Yeah. Uh, I think that's a great question. So frequency of paying your loan is more important than the speed. And we have seen a lot of small business owners, you know, they'll get some payments and they want to repay the loan pretty quickly without planning for future cash flow needs. So our advice to our customers is that, you know, if you can repay it earlier, it's good because it shows that, you know, you have uh, planned it well. But in most of the cases, Keep paying uh, at the frequency that was initially decided until and unless you you get some discount paying it off early. If you don't get a discount uh, and 
and in small and in certain small business loans actually there's early payoff penalty then obviously don't pay off everything early uh, you can lower down by paying higher than minimum payments that you need to make every month or every week and that will help you to lower your liability uh, while at the same point of time uh, what the credit bureaus look for your business credit rating is not if you're paying it down faster what they're looking is is at the frequency so let's say you pay down one month or two months uh, faster than what was expected and then in the third month you have a cash flow crunch and you're not able to make your uh, required payments it's actually going to impact your business credit in a negative way then keep paying the amount of money that you have to pay every time uh, that it needs to be paid whether it's daily weekly or monthly so I think that you have to keep in plan because one thing we have learned in business is that businesses will have cash flow issues uh, at some point of time they'll have some bumps in payments some payments will Will always get delayed or there will be unexpected expenses which will come up so always keep money aside for your rainy day and don't just try to repay everything out as quickly as possible if you have to dip in your rainy day funds great uh, Roy, we uh, have a few questions through the B plans audience uh, sort of in a in a pretty expected way you mentioned earlier all the different types of alternative lending, uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer lending, all, all these kinds of things that crop up and, and become popular over time. Um, you know, obviously, Biz to Credit offers a way of kind of filtering all those things out and figuring out what's best for you. But, um, you know, just in terms of payment uh, terms, in terms of uh, the loan quality, is there anything that you could say on a broad level about the differences between, you know, a more traditional bank loan and SBA loan versus, you know, a, a, a revenue-based loan versus peer-to-peer -peer lending, just in terms of maybe the interest rates or anything else that someone yeah. might want to consider. Yeah. So I think there are three things to keep in mind when you're applying for a loan and and then how you compare those. So obviously, if you're taking a bank loan, which is non-SBA, you can get that kind of loan at interest rates between 4 to 7% a year with monthly payments and terms between one year to five to seven years. Uh, one one big issue there is there's a large, uh, uh, I would say, large number of requirements out there. You should be in business for at least three years, should have a credit score of above 680. So startups are ruled out for that kind of money at all. Uh, then the second aspect is SBA, which is small business administration loans, which is where startups are eligible. But most of the time, these startups have to be franchisees or a concept of a proven business. Uh, it happens very rarely that as an S that a business owner can get an SBA loan uh, without having these things in place or without having put a lot of equity, uh, their own equity in the business. There the interest rates are between 55 to 6%, loan terms between 3 to uh, 25 years depending on the fact that if you are putting any real estate as a collateral, if not then it's 3 to 7 years. If you are putting any real estate collateral then it can be, it can go up to 25 years. Both these kinds of loan need a lot of paperwork. Uh, processing time of anywhere between 4 to 12 weeks so keep that in mind. Alternative lending has grown a lot over the last few years and that include your merchant cash advance that includes now your peer-to-peer -peer loans and there are some benefits of these uh, and I would say there are two benefits and two downsides so the benefits is that you know if you really need money to keep, keep or to keep growing your business or you or you get a good short-term opportunity where the cost of capital can be offset by the opportunity that you are getting into, then you can borrow that money. Uh, so that's one. The second is the speed and the turnaround time. So typically, these loans can be obtained in a period of between 48 to 96 hours or in certain cases in week to 10 days. So those are the good things. The, uh, the downsides are the interest rates are can be exorbitantly high. They can go up to 150, 200% a year. So be careful. Don't go and just borrow money from any alternative lender out there. That's where at Best to Credit we sort out every alternative lender and we have capped the interest rates of alternative lenders also at around 30% a year, which is still high, but still it's a lot better than borrowing money at 150% a year. What we at Best to Credit have also done recently, which has been very successful, is that we have launched an institu institutional platform. So that means that pension funds and family offices can put money directly and and can lend money directly to small business owners and those loans come at anywhere between 9 to 16% a year 
with monthly payment options unlike merchant cash advance which are daily repayment options and there you also have the ability as a business owner to get loans between two to five year terms. Uh, the only thing to keep in mind is that your business should be 12 months or above in age and should uh, be consistently doing revenue of uh, uh, the um, at least of 10 to 15,000 a month. So I think those are some of the very important uh, you know things uh, that you have to keep in mind. And again, you know, plan early, plan well, and you know, search for things. So the good thing is there's a lot of options available online today, uh, just from an information perspective. So use that, uh, you know, before you apply for a loan. I think those are the biggest questions we had on our side, and I would just encourage everyone to uh, follow up if they'd like, if they think of any new questions afterwards, to uh, check out the posting of this on articles.bplans.com after the webinar. We'll send an email out with that link, obviously. Uh, Rohit, any uh, other final words for this matter? Otherwise, this has been great. Yeah. So we would like to share the poll results with all the participants, and I know there are a few more questions out there, but we'd like to share the poll results. and. Uh, and uh, some of the other questions are there like you know if you're a sole prop can you apply for a loan yes you can uh, advice would be still to incorporate your company we work outside us now in india and in canada so we can help you there so those are some of the questions if you have any f f further questions you can feel free to email us at info at com, and we will make sure that each and every co question gets answered so as we are sharing this uh, you know, poll, uh, and uh, you know, so you can see that you know, uh, and this is something very interesting because when we, when I started the company, you know, m almost seventy percent of the people used to go to their bank first, uh, while you know now more people are searching online than going to their banks initially. So that's the future. That that's going to force the banks also to become more efficient, and that's a good news for every small business owner. That doesn't mean that every small business owner can get money from bank, but that means that you know. You, by going online and by you know demanding the kind of stuff you will be able to force banks to change themselves uh, now one of the top issues that we see every day is uh, you know either low credit or short time in business so you as a small business owner have to prepare well if you have a low credit because you borrowed a lot of money on your personal credit for your business then document it document it as part of the loan application tell the tell the lending institution that's the reason why you have a low credit identify it because that's important short time in business is a big big reason because most of the lenders are not willing to lend money uh, to businesses which are less than 12 months or even two years so you can come on best to credit we have micro lenders who can start the process at six months three months uh, or you know keep a job alongside running a business for first one to one and a half years that will help you to prove a concept and then can help you to get more money. So I think those are my advices and high rates is uh, something that you know uh, you have to be very smart about it you know that how you approach the market negotiate with the lenders you know tell them that the lenders need you as much as you need them so uh, don't feel shy about not negotiating on the pricing. Uh, the response time I would say uh, you know, uh, we are seeing a lot of people want very quick response, uh, which is great. But at the same point of time, keep in mind that the quicker the response you want, most of the time, the more expensive the money would be. So keep that in mind. And my advice is that if you are looking for a reasonable price of money, then give the lender at least 70 to 296 hours to respond back. Because the more thorough underwriting they will do, the better pricing they can come back with. So. So that's the advice there that how you can you next uh, and then that means that you need to start earlier uh, in the in the process than later. Uh, the next question is uh, uh, you know so this is very interesting that obviously we know from our experience that every small business owner their dream is to get a bank loan. So the key thing here is that if you if you want to wait for six months is great but don't just wait take steps build your business credit keep growing your business keep showing some progress. You know, be in touch with your banker, or if you're on Bistro Credit, you know we we run a lot of reengagement campaigns. So be part of it. Use your Biz Analyzer tool because it's not just that if you wait for six months or a year, automatically you will get a bank loan. You will have to show progress. You will have to show to banks that yes, you know 
you know the business or you can run the business well because it's not just your application when any bank before they provide a loan will do a site visit so you have to answer a lot of the their questions so be prepared for that know your business well so that's something very very important you know actually and if you borrow some high cost money in the interim if you're using it well then it also helps you to go and get the loan uh, from bank you know uh, I, I, again this is very important you know repaying your debt should be very important I would say and expanding your business buying property should be fine but I think that should not become more important than running your payroll on time so I think that's what uh, our advice would be we'll be sending out this poll results also uh, uh, to everyone so I would say mm, thanks for uh, thanks to everyone for attending uh, uh, the webinar and I think we can take one one question if somebody wants because we we still have uh, five minutes to go you know actually So I think there's one question was that would you like to take a startup, uh, take a loan to start a business? Uh, I my advice and suggestion would be start the business with your own money. Uh, that's always better. That always thing one you don't get into a liability of repaying a loan if the business doesn't work out, and then the second thing is it shows to potential lenders a confidence that you know you have a skin in the game and you can run a business even if you have to run it for three to six months it's fine but start with your own money start proving a concept then you can borrow money at a lower cost as for looking for investors it's relevant only in certain kind of businesses uh, high-tech businesses online businesses and other businesses it's tough to go and raise money from investors and and even if you raise that initially then you give away a lot of equity which will come and haunt you back so obviously start a business, then you can either raise money from investors as equity or go and do debt financing, actually. So I think uh, one, one final question, which is a very interesting question, is that are there any organizations that give loans based on future profits without requiring collaterals? Uh, you, can, you, you can build a business plan, financial projections, small business administration has loan products that can will take into account financial projections. But if it is a startup, they will need some kind of a collateral uh, to actually offset that risk uh, because otherwise then it becomes speculative lending and that nobody will do in the marketplace. So uh, the answer is yes, lenders can base it on future profits, but in that case they will need some collateral or uh, some equity coming in from your side as a part of the uh, business. You know. So Peter, thanks uh, for arranging the webinar, and and I think it was a and there was a lot of partic participation today, and I would like to thank uh, all the participants and all the registrants who actually registered and were part of the webinar for last one hour. Great, Rohit. Thanks so much. Uh, we agree. Thank you for doing this presentation, and. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, B plans and Biz Credit are, are partnered on this uh, generally educational content idea here today, uh, but also on a loan center that we're testing out on bplans.com. Again, if you go to articles.bplans.com after this presentation, you'll be able to see the video recording, the transcript, and also post any new questions you might have between now and then. Um, we'll also be following up by email. Otherwise, thanks to everyone for attending today. We appreciate your time and hope you learned something.